Welcome to Mortgages and More, your go-to podcast for the latest insights in the mortgage industry. Join us as we dive into expert advice, unveil actionable tips, and learn how to empower the next generation of home buyers. Get ready to elevate your knowledge and make those property dreams a reality. Let's get started. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to our 30 and 30. It's January. We're getting closer and closer to February, which is when our brand new book is coming out. Title pending. <laughs> but we're excited, Brian. I'm excited for our guest today. Oh, yeah. This is uh, this is always a treat for me. Um, Christopher and I met at a, uh, a mortgage conference back in my former life. Um, back in your former life too, uh, I believe. And uh, I've come to know Christopher really well. He is probably the most passionate professional in our industry who's focused on doing things right for, for our veterans, those who served. Um, and I'm proud to be a, a partner with Chris's organization, Vetted VA, and super excited to have you, Christopher, be part of our project to help educate the next generation loan officer. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. My pleasure. Now, you know, pick to write a chapter in a book. A couple of my teachers rolling over in their graves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a few of us that have the same, uh, the same thing going on. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's tease it out a little bit. Let's share with our audience, you know, what, what they're in for. Don't give it away. Don't give away all the, all the goods, but just kind of Talk to them a little bit about what you're going to be sharing in your chapter of the book. Yeah, certainly. And uh, thanks for having me on here. Um, I think a lot of, I run into a lot of professionals at least that have a desire to serve veterans, right? They want to uh, be able and capable of working with them more frequently. And not only that, but doing a good job with it. Uh, so for my part in the book, I'll be discussing what you can do as a professional to actually really become proficient uh, at serving veterans at understanding the different you know, circumstances veterans go through and what opportunities they have in front of them and how best you can put yourself in a position so that when they have questions, when they're ready, they come to you. Love it. And there, and there's, I, I happen to have a pretty good uh, uh, visibility into, into what Christopher's organization does, Kyle. It's amazing. Uh, they are truly, truly leading with education, um, but educating those that serve those that served. It's it's a it's an amazing mission. Um, so, Christopher, uh, you could have written forever. We know you know we know you love to uh, to scribe. So, you know, if, had we given you another chapter, maybe another couple thousand words, is there something else that you would have kind of dug deep on and 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 maybe gone another layer uh, layer down? Um, I think probably I would I would go into a little bit more behind, you know the traditional experience of what veterans go through, why the entitlement exists the way that it does, why it's so flexible, why why it is frankly the best mortgage on earth because of those things. A lot of people don't understand what drove Congress to create the VA loan, essentially, um, and how they wanted to impact VA housing and home ownership. Um, I think it's hard to understand if you haven't been through it yourself. So all the veterans that listen to this or a lot of the veterans that we work with regularly, they get it. They understand. Right. Um, you talk about credit issues and those types of problems that are a little bit not just unique to veterans, but the circumstances that cause those certainly are. It's like you run into people that are like, hey, I was you know, 90 days late on my car payment because my auto pay stopped and I was in Fallujah. Yeah, we didn't have Internet. I couldn't hop on there and update my banking information, right? So there's these weird circumstances that I think get veterans into, you know, positions that a lot of people maybe not have uh, have had to work through just yet. And I think it's really important, um, not only what, what you do as a professional and, and how capable you are at it, but understanding the why behind the, the entire thing, I think paints the picture for a lot of them and, and gives them an opportunity to share that same passion. Because if you're not passionate about what you do, Quit and go do something else. Life's too short. You, des you deserve it. You owe it your to yourself. And the people that you're serving ultimately will understand and see you differently if they know that you're passionate and you care about what it is that you do. Christopher, so I want to I want to know, because I, I don't know, 
Can you give us a little insight into the story, like behind why and how Congress created the VA loan? Yeah. So home ownership for veterans was very low as a percentage of, you know, a national percentage. And a lot of the problems that veterans were encountering or encountering were their circumstances were just a lot different, right? From their income structures to, you know, going from a career over here to getting out and then having to restart completely. Their credit stuff um, certainly had some issues around it. The types of housing that they could afford and what was available to them and the things that they desired uh, the traditional kind of loan options, the conventional loan, really at that point, didn't really um, didn't really support the veteran in that circumstance to help them, you know, be to become homeowners. It was it was failing, and we saw uh, there was a very large number of, of, of veterans that were simply unable to obtain home ownership. And you see that in kind of a uh, minority lending for like what the last three or four years now. There's been a big push all over the place, right? They want minorities to be able to accomplish home ownership more. And the reason why is because they become wealthier. The nation does better, right? And it's it's just better all the way around the board. You have less, less social programs that are needed, subsidy programs that are needed. It creates a path for them to go forward on uh, that's a little bit different. And oddly enough, um, if you want to see the highest numbers as far as minority home ownership in the U.S. with any loan program, VA loan does it, does it better. Wow. What's so, the, hey, Kyle, timeline. you may not be aware, though, on a, with a VA loan, the veteran can literally buy a home with no down payment. Wow. I mean, that's yeah. a huge, a huge factor in. in, in uh, no in FICO benefit. score requirement. The VA does not dictate a certain FICO scores needed to qualify for the loan. There's no DTI limitation on it. It works off of something called residual income, which really performs around household uh, cash flow which is, I think, a much better mechanism to, uh, you know, test the veracity behind default and, and some of these other things that come into play. It, it, making someone a homeowner doesn't mean anything if they can't sustain home ownership. And that's why some of the other programs I think out there, Fannie even, is looking at the VA loan as a, somewhat of a model on how to maybe reform wow. some of their other products. Well, so this is what's frustrating to me is having spent a ton of time on both the real estate side and the mortgage side. I know so many lenders that are super passionate about the VA loan, but then you throw the VA loan out around a group of realtors and most of what they have to say about it is negative. Yeah. Why is there such a large gap in uh, the desire the lender has to serve that loan and then the lack of understanding on the other side for the realtor? I would say, and this word hurts people, it shouldn't, but ignorance, ignorance is probably the most common obstacle that we see out there among professionals. And it's one of two things, right? Ignorance in the sense that the agent has no idea what the loan is actually capable of. It may be because of their past experience. It may be because of something that they heard. And more than likely, it's because they were working with a lender in a past experience that had a very, very narrow uh, lane of VA loans that they could do, right? VA doesn't dictate um, all of these different details, but lenders come in with their overlays. You're familiar with that. And they become very restrictive. And so the thought process that kind of, you know, makes it to the industry is that the loan itself is incapable or that the borrower themselves is somehow subpar mm. compared to the other borrowers out there using different loan types, which it's just an absolute untruth, right? You have guys like Dave Ramsey out there talking about the VA loans terrible. He would never use it or advocate for anyone to use it. And it's just absolute nonsense. He uses and sets up apples to orange situations to compare and contrast different borrower classes. Uh, and that really like, hey, here's a here's a broke veteran with terrible credit and no opportunity to do anything. That's why you shouldn't use a VA. I mean, it's just they set these fictitious scenarios up to where, of course, when you look at them in that light, they're not going to compare well. Right. And I think that's the same problem that the agents really run into out there is they've worked with bad lenders or lenders that don't know what they're doing or they just simply haven't been educated. Education is the number one place Huge. professionals need to focus on if they want to serve veterans more. Well, bro, I, I, I know, I think I can speak for so many people that would say we want to serve the community more, but we don't know where to start. And that's why we wanted you to be a part of this book and shed light on Vetted VA. And so, man, from the bottom of our hearts, it, it is an honor to have you as a part of, of what we're doing with this book. And uh, I can't wait to see the veteran community impacted for, for really positive ways because of, of the efforts that you guys are putting in. 
Well, certainly, thank you for the opportunity. My goal was always the same with Veta VA. It was how do we retrain, you know, re-educate an entire industry that seems to be getting this wrong more often than they are right. Yeah. And the reality is without different microphones to speak into and platforms to add content to, uh, it's a lot harder to get a message out there. So thank you all for what you're doing, for giving, you know, professionals this opportunity to learn more and see several different, you know, perspectives from different professionals in the industry doing different things. Absolutely, ma'am. Love it. Guys. We'll see you tomorrow.